can hold the Protoss army right there. I think he's got enough time for the beam. Oh. It's going to be close. Oh, oh my god! Welcome back to ANZ Champs StarCraft 2. It's the last chance for you to catch a series of ANZ Champs StarCraft 2 for the three days that we've had it because it's the last chance qualifier and it's going to be Blisk and t Bowl playing each other in a best of five PvP for the eighth spot in DreamHack Winter. I'm joined by my friend Light. How are you doing? Good. I mean, I'm okay. Um, <laughs> of course, I'm um, not okay. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're gonna, we come down to the last chance qualifier. It's a best of five. Man, it's going to be a PvP. Yeah, I know. Absolute madness. I, I can't wait for how messy this series is about to get. It's an absolute prospect. Uh, it's kind of crazy how we've gotten to this point, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I feel like Blisk was kind of up there. He was performing really, really well throughout uh, all of this group. And then, unfortunately, similar to that other group where you had Thuklau mm -hmm. up three and one, and you're like, man, of course this guy's going to yeah. qualify. And then the head-to-heads, the map scores come <laughs> in, and all of the results come in those last couple of games, and all of a sudden the round robin just sweeps everything you knew, pulls the carpet out from underneath your feet, and you're left <laughs> wondering what the hell just happened mate mate give some everyone give some love to thuck loud because he was robbed okay <laughs> oh, absolutely robbed disgusting God. he was we're looking... just trying to keep these vietnamese yeah. uh, starcraft players down because they're just a bit too op at the moment oh my god he was doing so well right and then t today just it came down to like a pvp against t-ball himself and mm. Yeah, then he was knocked down, didn't even make it to the third place match. Yeah, did not. And t uh winning that head-to-head -head has uh, earned himself his own spot mm. in the last chance qualifier. He's a man who's been a little bit up and down, but it's worth mentioning that you did see the 2-0 off stream from mm. T-Bowl over Thuklau in a PvP. Yeah. And so that's... if he brings that same level of form here against Bliss, that's got to be something you got to be concerned about, right? Definitely, definitely. That's scary, right? Like T-Bowl, he's won all of his PvPs that he's had here in Ainza Champs. To be fair, one of them was against Leo Rusher. Um, so I don't know how much stuff we can put into that, but beating Thuklau, like that's pretty huge. That is pretty huge. So, so far, PvP going well for T-Bowl, but it is worth mentioning that it's quite good for Blisk as well. Let's take a look at the two bands, the two maps that we will not be seeing in this PvP best of five in the last game of ANZ Champs here. What will they be? Um... <laughs> yeah, we'll kind of indicate, especially since, you know, this is the very first best of five that we're going to be having throughout the entire weekend. We have only had best of threes and, ooh, okay. Kind of interesting here. Pillars of Gold taken out by Blisk. So that's a bit more of a uh, pretty much the most standard map in yeah. the pool in terms of ones that players know and will go into a bit of a long game. And something that I think Blisk is quite comfortable on going back to some of those other seasons of ANZ Champs on the old map pool, playing some of these PvPs into a bit of a longer fashion. Mm. T-Bowl showing that he actually does not want a short rush distance map that is going to be, you know, uh, potential for some big S. And it's worth notice noting that uh, I believe Blisk is going to have a, you know, it's not something I like to bring up too much, but mm. uh, it is actually going to be a pretty distinctive ping advantage for Blisk and the reason why I bring that up um, is because it's a PvP right this is a micro intensive matchup mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely it all, a lot of the time it does come down to the blink stalker micro not just that but disruptor shots as well like you need to be on point with everything and ping can come into play um, especially since we're going to be playing on Singapore and that's exactly where Blisk resides yeah, absolutely he's going to have a massive advantage for himself in terms of that let's see what the order of the maps is going to be and uh, roll out all of the picks to find out uh, how things will work and I think it's this is always interesting in an RTS best of five because you kind of start to construct yourself how the path of this series is going to go and the and sort of think to yourself oh maybe this player in the order of these maps can get himself a 3-0 here but if it goes to this map it might be a little bit difficult for the other player maybe in a mirror matchup that's a little bit less of the case because usually certain maps are inherently biased to one race a little bit more mm -hmm. however do you see anything in particular taking into account the ping and maybe some of the play styles and history of these two players yeah i mean uh, pvp for better or for worse it can be a little bit coin flippy um we can see a lot of not necessarily build order wins but like you don't scout something out on the map you know a proxy pylon or something proxy like a stargate or a robo and on a map like romanticide on a map like you know all these new ones like the scouting paths aren't necessarily figured out on them yeah haven't uh, unfortunately got that all nailed down so you can find all of those sneaky proxy pylons 
on positions. You know, there's also some other things that can sort of ruin your day. You know, how many matches will we see somebody fail to plug the wall or something mm -hmm. like that? That can also be a factor. So plenty of opportunities for those of these players to, I wouldn't say sort of like gimmick themselves a win, but more so sneak a win in mm -hmm. an easier fashion than a more drawn out game where you have to uh, out macro your opponent. Yeah, definitely. Um, I will say that because it is a best of five, like um, it's a little bit difficult to come out with a full on cheesy victory. Like when it comes to the series in total sure. in the best of three, you only need two wins. Best of five, it's a little bit different. Absolutely. So uh, you're going to have to see who is the more consistent in mm. the PvP matchup. We are getting ready with the game starting. The countdown is going down. Two of the main storylines I really want to focus on is this is Blisk's playground. The man has gone through the last chance qualifiers in a lot of PvPs and similar ANZ champ series previously. So he's in his comfort zone. But it's worth noting that Obviously, T-Ball's form in PvP is pretty fantastic during AZ Champs so far. So I don't even bloody know which way this is going to go here, Light. <laughs> Me, I don't know either. But you know who does know? Production. They do, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they didn't share their prediction with me because mm. obviously that would spoil the script. You can't uh, bring the ending of the series before it does end up happening. Either way, the first of the two Protoss players in this series, it will be the blue Protoss, T-Ball. And spawning in the bottom right of Lightshade, we have the Singaporean Protoss. He is red, he is Blisk. Originally from Europe himself. Kind yeah, of. he's uh, Polish, mm -hmm. Singaporean. There was another one. German. German. Yeah. Okay, yep. It's all over the place. I feel like I should go for Blisk because <laughs> I'm a Protoss player and I'm Polish. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, I want to go to Singapore. Looks like a nice place. You haven't been? Maybe a little bit humid. Mm. No, I've been to Malaysia. I haven't made it across to Singapore ah. just yet. Have some good friends from Singapore. Actually, one of whom is, uh, I mean, this is just a tangent and a half, but his <laughs> Counter-Strike team is currently playing in the closed qualifier of DreamHack. Oh. DreamHack Winter, I believe it is. So uh, there you go. Nice. Uh, we do have some coinciding tournaments happening throughout these tournament organizer circuits. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is loosely connected whether it's different games whether it's different organizers here is something interesting <laughs> like yeah, i just oh, saw you get uh, a little bit it. excited they've been doing it <laughs> what are they doing like? they, they, we got some proxy pylons out on the map we do yes but we are yet to see what the proxies will be for whether they will just be there to sow some seeds of doubt in mm. the, each other's minds or whether they will be utilized yeah. Well, what's you, what are you doing up there, mate? <laughs> I love it. So, I mean, you raise a good point. There are a couple of times where you just throw down a pylon out there in the middle of the map just to sow seeds of doubt. You know, you have no intention of really proxying. You just put it in your opponent's mind because they go for that probe scout and they see the missing pylon. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that um, in a best of five, like you do see here in a PvP, those proxy pylons being thrown out on the map and they're not used mm. can be useful to you in your further maps deeper into the series because mm -hmm. maybe next time again he comes into the pro the base with the probe scout say it's blisk in this case and it's been a pylon out of the map for t-ball mm -hmm. he goes in there okay look there's no uh extra pylon in there but he didn't proxy me last time and then this time he goes for the proxy you know it can be a little bit of a mind game as mm -hmm. we move deeper into the series mm -hmm. worth noting as well we have the stalker opening two stalkers actually very quickly put out there by blisk who is uh, following it up with a Stargate. Now for T-Ball though, it's the Adept opening and a quicker Nexus. Yeah, and something that's important as well is that that pylon from T-Ball, it is still useful when it comes to scouting, especially if Bliss decides to send his, you know, Oracle or Phoenix across the edges of the map towards that Northern location. Meanwhile, Bliss, it does look like he will catch some of these Adepts out in the center. Yeah. Let's see if he's able to do uh, the dirty on one of them. And he does indeed pick off one of those adepts. So a nice little pick up there from Bliss, someone who often does utilize these stalkers to great proficiency in the PvP matchup. He drops his own Nexus very, very, uh, well, much later than mm. his opponent, uh, Teeble. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Teeble, he is um, actually committing quite a bit to these adepts. I believe he has five currently out on the map looking to try and go across. But Bliss, now that he has these stalkers, he's kind of forcing them to stay home. Oh, the shield battery actually could be a bit of a difference maker. Now the shade on top of that one stalker Ooh. doesn't quite get it, though. Good micro from Bliss and now returning a bit of fire 
That's two adepts picked off without losing one of these attacking units here for Bliska. t -Ball just continues to commit to more and more of these adepts. Now he's getting himself a Stargate as well, which is going to be quite a deal behind Bliska. But I'm worried for t -Ball here, Light, and the reason is he doesn't have any units that shoot up. <laughs> he does not, and that Oracle, it is moving across the map quite quickly. Where's there the shield even, battery? Exactly, there isn't even a shield battery to help out with the mineral line. Oh, so this is where the Oracle could just come in and ruin t -Ball's day. It's the classic PvP story. The Oracle slips into the probe line and starts zapping away, and there's not really anything to answer. Okay, the two sentries will at least keep it in check for now under the the watchful eye Ooh. of that shield battery. Oh no, it's both at the same time. <laughs> like it's both the Oracle and the Adepts getting into the mineral line. It's absolute chaos, and Jesus. it's everything I could have ever hoped for. <laughs> so the Oracle does end up going down in the main base of T Ball. Meanwhile, these Adepts they do deal some damage, but nowhere near as much as that. Oracle did. Not just yet, but they still are oh. right clicking away at a couple of these probes, even though they are being finally cleaned up. The shield battery will deal with those last two. And after all is said and done, we're dead even in the workers with a slight army supply advantage for Blisk. Oh, we do have an Oracle coming into the natural though, and at the Blisk, the stalkers they aren't in position only just now. Uh, two taken out, so that's going to be a little bit of a additional boon there for t Bowl as he continues to pump out his own probes. Blisk getting a little bit earlier into the blink there for himself as he did chuck that Twilight down. So as you do see, the Oracles continue to try to find some value, but some nicely placed units mm -hmm. there for t Bowl. Yeah, exactly. This time he was ready for it. He had plenty of Stalkers in his main base and in his natural, so the Oracle didn't get any damage done, but does stay alive. So I think it's still anyone's game here, very well and truly. Mm. Now you're going to see T-Bowl at his own Twilight there as a gateway gets plopped down there for Bliss. Just try to give him a little bit more production value. Yeah, and I think this is something that I like about this matchup at the moment. You know, maybe if they went up against a lesser Protoss player, that one of these players would be miles ahead. But at the moment, they have kind of gone blow for blow. Blow for blow so far. As uh, Blisk now moving into a forge, wants to try to get an earlier plus one to, uh, than his opponent. Oh, he's drawing away the stalkers. Yeah. The real Oracle oh. goes in. Wow, that's actually a master <laughs> stroke for T-Ball. I didn't even envisage that as uh, the hallucinated Oracle does pull the stalkers away light. That's very, very uh, nicely spotted. Yeah, yeah. It's some cheeky plays coming in here. You don't often see them, you know, with the hallucination that way, but he was able to get additional worker damage done. If you're going to save it for any point, you'd save it for the last chance qualifier here. Pulling out all the stops is exactly what you like to see. Robo does start production there for T-Ball a little earlier than Blisk, who is instead focusing on getting here a couple more gateways up, getting his Blink online as well as his plus one upgrade. Yeah, at the moment, you know, we do see things are pretty similar for both players. Like, they're both going for Blink, both going for their upgrades. Um, interesting that we have a random hallucinated disruptor <laughs> going through the center. t has being very cheeky this game, <laughs> and I'm a big fan. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from the man. Mm -hmm. It seems like Blisk wants to grab himself an additional Nexus there, and his probe does get zapped down as a result there, but uh, he still does put it down. T-Ball also going for his third Nexus, so similar-looking PvP than we've seen in, in ANZ Champs so far. A mm -hmm. little bit of Oracle pressure. Um, you do see the Immortal production starting now for T-Ball. Yeah, yeah, nice hallucination does get all the way to the ramp, so it does scout, question mark. Um, <laughs> it was kind of weird, but, you know, it is it is nice, a nice cheeky play. As both players, they are working on their robos. As you pointed out, T-Ball, he does have the higher Immortal count, or he will have, as he did start the production much earlier. Yeah, well, let's see if that does end up being a differentiating factor, particularly mm. when you only do have those uh, Immortals, uh, uh, or you, you only have those Stalkers rather up against the Immortals. It, it does end up biting you in the butt a little bit, but when you have the Zealots in there, it can be a little bit of a different story. Either way, Nexus is a both players starting to finish up. Bliss really ramping up the production as he wants to start to saturate that third base. And as a result, adds a couple of extra gateways to really get a bunch of those gateway units pumping out. Yeah, we'll see how the main armies like end up transforming throughout the course of this game because we were talking about disruptors earlier, right? Mm. And how um, integral they can be to this matchup and how Bliss can take advantage of perhaps ping as well yes. when it comes to dodging those shots. So yeah, just keeping an eye on them and immediately Bliss, he starts that robotics bay. I think it's the way to go, honestly, here. Mm. Like, that's uh, If you're ever going to win a series up against uh, a player with a low ping, you want to try to uh, weaponize that uh, lower reaction time, lower millisecond and uh, 
Contrary on the other side for T-Ball, I mean, I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. If I'm going to try and leverage the fact that I'm playing Ooh. with a lower ping, mm -hmm. I want to go for some Zealot Archons or something like that. I want to go for some run buys and yeah. some DT drops, things like that, that are a little bit more consistent than trying to use little minuscule amounts of micro to try to leverage myself an advantage. Yeah, definitely. Like This very much so was a thing in StarCraft in the past as well. I know famously there were a lot of Chinese Protoss players who avoided use it using High Templar, for example, because um, Storms just they just weren't accurate like because of their ping disadvantage they just avoided that and they had their own playstyle instead yeah try to use those colossus instead or mm. the hit and run tactics with the zealot archon this clearing out that uh, edge pylon from earlier on but uh you know it's something nothing too noteworthy as you do see t-ball chucks his own uh, colossus den down he is still pumping away those uh, zealots and two of those stalkers go down for blisk so a pretty, I don't think this game could be any more <laughs> even, really. Um, mm -hmm. I'm liking the static defense. Neither player really taking too many chances, as they do know both of them like and have used to great proficiency those Zealot run buys, those mm -hmm. Dark Templar um, drops. So I like the cannons and the shield batteries being added in uh, and sprinkled in uh, the mineral lines there. Yeah, yeah, and I like how both players are very much so kind of respecting each other. They're both backing off, they're kind of macroing up, they realize that they don't want to slip up, you know, push across the map and, you know, be caught with your opponent having a defender's advantage. Um, but we do see a little bit of a difference. Immediately, Tebow does start Blink DTs. Oh, that is uh, very cheeky. He's <laughs> he's really showing some interesting little tricks here so mm. far in this PvP. Let's see if it's actually going to be able to get himself in a better position than his opponent. You do see the additional Nexus going down there for Tebow a little bit quicker than Blisks, who seems like he wants to expand down there on the low ground as well when he gets the minerals too. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I, again, very, very similar. Yeah, I mean, he did scout the Dark Shrine earlier. Bliss did that of t -ball. So I imagine he has static defense all over the place, um, you know, in preparation for that. But despite that, Blink DTs, wow. they can still very quickly dive on top of the Nexus. A couple of uh, Blink Stalkers have been caught out there. But mm -hmm. will they be finished off by t -ball as the Stasis Trap does start to fade here? He's going to be able to try to Blink in a certain direction, but... Not sure oh. which direction he's going to try to go for. Unfortunately, uh, the answer is none of the above, as he loses pretty much all of those stalkers, except for that last one who is left alive to go and tell the rest of the stalkers what happened to their friends. <laughs> and uh, oh. now we're starting to see the warpins come and kick in, mostly Dark Templars here for Blisk. Exactly. We've seen this, you know, Blisk, he's gone for these Zealot Rumbys, DT Rumbys as well. And there is a cannon, but it's only one. Oh, the oh first God. disruptor shot just connects absolutely hugely, and that is already one of those situations where the game might have just been decided yeah. off the back of a massive disruptor hit. Still, these uh, Zealots and uh, Dark Templar do get cleaned out nicely by T-Bowl, who's starting to fire his own disruptor shots back. This another one being sent in towards the edge of that Protoss army, and a couple of Stalkers uh actually getting on top of the, the disruptors there. That's been taken out as well, and I think Blisk has just put himself in an excellent position a decent disruptor hit there, fired back, and unfortunately that last disruptor for T-Bolt doesn't quite connect there, Light. Exactly, and that was the last shot. This one is still on cooldown, and now the bull is in Bliss Court. He's been able to deal so much damage, but he does end up getting pushed back by the DTs. After all is said and done, I thought that that big disruptor hit the connection that Bliss was going to be able to get himself would have just decided the game. But we are back to a quieter period, and it's worth noting that T-Ball has much, much more workers than Blisk has access to right now. Mm. A couple of DTs just running in here essentially to their deaths. The last one is allowed to blink away and survive for now. Yeah, I mean, Blisk, he took a really good engagement, but he just couldn't capitalize on it. Like, and there were still so many units left for T-Ball. He had the defender's advantage. He had DTs as well. And at the time, I don't believe there was detection. There is now an observer with the main army. But as you were saying, T-Ball, like, he is well ahead in workers. Yeah. See if he can utilize that uh, economy advantage there. 15 worker lead for the man. Only disruptors in the production tab as we slow down here. Yeah, yeah. And again, it just kind of comes down to the disruptor micro. So even though T-Ball does have a better economy, like it could just come down to the purification shots. Yep. That's a pretty exciting prospect, if you ask <laughs> me. You know, some of those big plays making the difference between these two players and who's going to make it to Dreamhack Winter into the top eight. Pretty yeah. good field. What do you think about the field up there at the moment? Um, I mean, it looks pretty scary, to be honest. I just, I can't wait to see some of these players who, you know, they've been able to relax and chill, whether it's Probe, Seether, and me and Micah, they've just been able to watch and cheer on for their boys. Yeah. 
Well, who won't be able to chill is the probes over at this expansion. Although, again, uh, the static defense just worth its weight in gold for both players, really being able to deal with some of these DT and Zealot runbys. A wave of stalkers trying to be warped in to clean out these DTs and push them away from the fifth base there of t -ball. Yeah, both players kind of harassing with their DTs, denying as many expansions as they can. We haven't really seen the Blink DTs come into play. Ooh, and, ooh. Nice shot there from Blisk, just being able to take out a couple of those disruptors, and it doesn't look like he's done just yet. Setting more purification overs in. Another one connects nicely, at least this time, for T-Ball rather than Blisk, who's warping in another wave of Zealots there. Yeah, and I, I'm a little bit concerned. Like, T-Boy, it feels like he's lacking in the Disruptor count. Like, he only has two with his main army compared to Blisk, who has, what, six? Mm, Blisk hit a pretty nice Disruptor shot on some of mm. T-Ball's Disruptors previously. There's four Disruptors, but you are right. Plenty more for Blisk, and it looks like T-Ball's starting to move across the map and put some pressure on Blisk's uh, fourth base there rather than deal with the pressure that's at his front doorstep here, Light. Yeah, but of course, Blisk, he started the base trade faster. You know, he's already on top of the Nexus, the Nexus Four t is going to go down. t only just now starting, and Blisk, he, he turns around. He turns around to go and try and defend. Yes, of course, he cannot save this Nexus anymore. It's uh, kind of a foregone conclusion that it will go down, but he instead can try to catch this army before it recalls out here. One purification over being sent up there, and that's a pretty nice <gasps> oh. one on top of all of the disruptors for Blisk. It's a bait and switch from t -ball, an absolute masterstroke. Jesus Christ, at the same time though, three disruptors do get picked off before the recall finishes and surprisingly, I didn't think he, he could do it, but Bliss saved the Nexus. Yeah, he saved the Nexus and he picks off a handful of those stalkers out there from T-Ball. So now going to put his own pressure forward, Bliss, because he does have a pretty significant army supply advantage marching up to this newly established Nexus. Almost definitely will be cancelled. Mm. Now the transfer back down into that Nexus there, Light. Yeah, and T-Ball, he's just stuck on three bases. Earlier there was a DT that denied the base to the bottom left as well like Tibo he's been struggling so much to expand well you do see a bit of a standoff and it's really up to Blisk when he chooses to go for the uh pressure onto T-Ball here. It's going to be nothing short of a miracle for T-Ball to hold this as you see the Western Union economy. A big worker lead for T-Ball, but he's lacking in the army supply. The flank in as he brings some of these stalkers into the fray, but it is a massive army for Blisk. Exactly, and we could see it once again. He could take out this natural, just go all the way into the main, kill everything in there and just recall out. Potentially could be the case. A Purification Nova does actually not end up landing as the uh, Stalkers do snipe it. Bliss just kills that natural Nexus and says, yeah, good enough. <laughs> yeah, despite the 14 workers going down, T-Ball, he is still ahead. He still does have a bit of a worker lead, but again, now he's down to two base economy. He is, and he is still trying to replenish those Disrupt accounts. Again, the static defense doing God's work mm. over here with the overcharge. Now the run by of the Zealots from Blisk over there towards uh, T-Ball's main base. And uh, this is interesting. The DT just doing an absolute <laughs> great job holding down that choke point. Obviously no detection there for the Zealots of Blisk. And some more purification novas getting a little bit closer. Oh, and some, oh, actually a one for zero trade. One picked off in the favor of T-Ball there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we were talking about it earlier. Like, T-Ball, he has a work advantage, but look how oversaturated he is. He has 43 probes on that mineral line. Looks fine to me. I don't <laughs> see the problem. Oh, my God. Western Union would not approve of this economy. This is a um, very inefficient transfer <laughs> of funds. That is not something that Western Union does mm. at all. With Western Union, obviously, you can send your money all around the world pretty damn quickly. Yeah, but you know what? If you have an economy like T-Ball, and if you want to save some money, exclamation mark menu pog in the chat <laughs> if you want to get that discount on dinner tonight. Jesus Christ. <laughs> dude, full shill mode. We are very, very thankful to all of our sponsors here mm. that dish out uh, so many great deals and uh, such a great supporters of esports. Either way, back to the game as we've got some more counterattacks, some more zealots just chewing through some static defense. All oh, the disruptor shots going on top of T-Ball's army. Ooh. A couple's set back and then wow. the aggressive blink forward. I think it's just too many stalkers here for Blisk. Surely he's got a couple of extra immortals as well. And T-Ball has been left reeling. He's got about 30 army supply disadvantage and Blisk spells blood in the water. Exactly. All the disruptors go down and with the backbone of these immortals, he can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Another disruptor disruption shot hits and T-Ball, like he loses the majority of 
it on me, but he doesn't have detection. The DTs. The DTs are just doing so much damage here. No observer in sight. And now this disruptor going down as well. Also, the overcharge really helping T-Ball hold on there. But now you're seeing Blisk. He's gone for the Warpian simultaneously into the main of T-Ball. But seems like it is starting to get cleaned up a little bit better. A couple more Zealots and DTs being warped in and continuing to get on top of the production facilities here of T-Ball. He can't afford to lose these gateways and these robos. He might not be able to replace them so easily. Uh, exactly, mate. It all comes down to these DTs for either player and GG gets called. Wow, a victory from Blisk with the counter attack with some sick disruptor shots and he's going to go up 1-0 in this best of five series. Let's see if he can continue that trend after this break. One and zero for Blisk in this last chance qualifier match. And the man seems like he is in his comfort zone indeed. Similar to some previous series where he was able to, or seasons rather, where he was able to actually get himself a spot in the top eight off the back of a last chance qualifier PvP. How'd that game go like? What do you think of it? Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. We were talking about it earlier, like Blisk taking full advantage of his disruptor control because so many shots went out. And I mean, sure, T-Ball, he had a lot of DTs and they very often saved him and stopped Blisk from continuing to push forward. It just, it just wasn't enough. I think it's down to two things this series, um, no matter what. 
it's going to be down to number one, the disruptor shots, and then the run bars. Mm -hmm. Like, those are really the ultimate differentiating factors, the ultimate difference makers between these two uh, two players. Um, I would like to say that the third should be a little bit of cheese, getting someone a win or something like that, mm -hmm. but I'm not seeing it. These guys <laughs> seem quite comfortable to mm -hmm. just sit back on and, and go for those third nexuses and, and play a, a longer game out. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, you raise a good point when it comes to the run buys, right? Like many times we saw Bliss go in with that War Prism and actually manage to deal some decent damage across the map. Meanwhile, T-Ball, he couldn't do that at all. Like when he pushed out, like he couldn't even kill the fourth. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you saw at the end of there, T-Ball had like a 20 army supply. He didn't even have enough to kill off that run by. Mm. And when you get into those lower numbers um, of gateway units and it's a bunch of zealots and some DTs, it's actually pretty hard to deal with, man. Pretty oh, hard yeah. to clear out some of those uh, run bys and some of those drops. Yeah, definitely. Like, Bliss, he was well prepared. Like, he had plenty of side defense. He had cannons, he had shield batteries at every single one of his bases. And that's something that T-Ball was lacking. Yeah, we'll see if he's going to make up for that heading into the next map. It will be Jaganatha, another very, very new map to the map pool. And we'll see if there's anything sneaky or new that these players have devised for themselves to get themselves a map win in this PvP last chance qualifier. I keep wanting to say grand final. <laughs> I always feel like... Like, you know, we go from a best of three into a best of five. It feels like a bit of a grand final, right? Yeah, definitely. Like, best of fives are typically what you have in a finals. Um, so it's a little bit strange that we don't have one here. But this is this is pretty much it. Yep. Feels like one to me, to be honest. And mm. so far, it's kind of delivering. We've had a lot of exciting games uh, today in AZ Champs. I'm really enjoying this season. There's been a, a good diversity of different kinds of games. Oh yeah, definitely. Different kinds of games, different kinds of players. Um, and we'll see how things shape out here because again, like in game number one, you were talking about it earlier, they both proxied their first pylons. It didn't really, you know, it wasn't really for anything. They didn't proxy any buildings, mm. um, but you know, it could be a setup for later on. I feel like if Blisk proxies that pylon again and T-Ball's not making a shield battery, uh, that's just probably game. <laughs> the, the, like you saw T-Ball open those uh, adepts. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you know you got a proxy oracle flying into T-Ball's base mm. and he has only adepts and no shield battery in that mineral line, he's just going to die. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, so we'll see if they like even switch up their openings again. We did see T-Ball go for those double adepts in the beginning. Um, they, he can switch it up, you know, go for stalkers instead. Be, uh, play it out a little bit safer. Let's see if that's going to be the case. Um, interesting to know. I mean, it doesn't make much difference in the grand scheme of things, but I, I thought this got a much quicker um, uh, cyber core, like by about 10 seconds. Mm. Much more interesting than that, though, t is going to drop his uh, pylon in the top left there, which mm. is not really a proxy location <laughs> that you'd want, uh, to be honest. You yeah. know, not much closer than the main base is. So more of just a pylon to mess with Blisk a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like a little bit of mind games at play, you know, um, throw your opponent off, make them think that maybe you're doing something that you're not at all. Um, but Blisk, he does have his probe rallied around the map. He wants to make sure that he is safe and secure and that there is no proxy. Yeah, trying to go on that path, but he won't be able to find that pylon in the top left. And no matter how hard Ooh. he tries, Blisk drops a pylon in the top left himself, actually. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily something he's going to utilize. Two Stalkers coming out here for both players, so no Adept opening this time around. Mm -hmm. Maybe off the back of the fact that both of them opened Stargate last game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it looks like Blisk, he was able to spot that pylon okay. over to the top left. So that means, you know, he, now he knows he is secure, like there is no proxy. Okay, he just threw down this pylon over there. Um, and it's something interesting that happened both games. Both of the players did proxy their pylons pretty close to each other, and we actually have a building. Yeah, Twilight there for T-Bowl. In the meanwhile, Blisk drops a gateway actually up there to give himself some quicker warp pins yeah. over there towards the top left side. So seems to me like Blisk is looking to put on some real pressure with the Stalkers here. Oh yeah, definitely. He even threw down a shield battery at home so he can defend with minimal units while he sends the majority across the map and oh, T-Bowl even goes for an expansion. Oh, this could be a bit of a difficult situation for T-Bowl. He has got the pylon on the low ground, so if he does actually send some of this aggression coming out and drops one of those safety shield batteries that could be a bit of a difference maker for the man oh he's moving out though 
Yeah, he's moving out and he's investing quite a bit in towards that blink. So uh, this could actually be a very difficult situation here for T-Ball to hold this push. Yeah, we'll see if blink finishes up in time because Blisk, he is keen on applying that pressure. He has delayed his own Nexus for quite some time, but he is banking up his minerals, not for oh, a Nexus, for another Warpian. this is very game. clever from Blisk. He's trying to bait T-Ball's stalkers a little bit yeah. forward after seeing that pylon. And now he's actually going to trap them in. T-Ball thinks he can get out of here, but the three stalkers come in from the back line. These stalkers are absolutely trapped in here and this is going to be quite an inefficient trade for Blisk. Is he going to be able to get that last stalker? Unfortunately not and that's all of the fighting forces here for T-Ball. He only has four army supply, two stalkers and a shield battery. There's no damn way he is holding this one. Mate, what a big brain play. Blisk he baited his opponent out into that corner of the map, surrounded all the stalkers and now he can just focus on the shield battery. That's game. That, like, <laughs> he literally cannot come back from that. He's going to have to sack that Nexus but he allows it to finish. The actual uh, force field does segment two of those stalkers off for the, so that is something mm -hmm. worth noting there is a dark shrine in production here for t-ball so if he can actually get a sneaky dark templar over into a uh, premium position mm -hmm. at some point it could be a difference maker Ooh. is that a t-ball probe down there it actually it is. is so he can get a pylon down there and get a dark templar warp in down goes the Nexus of T-Ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love this. So T-Ball, he is going for that Hail Mary play. Like, he's going for that DT. And uh, and he even uh, threw down a pylon to um, to slow down the Nexus of Bliss. So he's going to be... He isn't going to be in that, like, massive economic lead that he would have liked to have been. All right. Well, we'll see if this is going to be enough to get T-Ball back in the game. He has trapped himself in the own his own base with that uh, pylon there. Yeah, and the problem is, like, there's no detection for Blisk. Like, there's no forge for a cannon. There's no... I don't it's believe the there's a Robo or a Stargate for an Oracle. Like, yeah, the DT. The yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see how he's going to play <laughs> this one. This could actually be the end of the game. It could. Blisk so is opening his wall. A, a couple of things could be done. Like, if he catches the Shimmer on the map, he can force field has the he got DT. the energy? I, I believe he has enough energy for one force field. Does he see? Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, he's force filtered him out. Now the robo does come in. Another uh, sentry is mm -hmm. warped in there. The first pylon being worked down. And now he, he just has to buy time. He has to make sure that robo finishes so the observer can pop out. He but can't warp in another sentry, though. Yeah, it's, everything's depowered. Is he, he just going to win with DTs? He can't warp in another sentry. This first gateway is going down, and that's the only one that gets repowered there, Light. And I think it's just going to be focused down. I think mm -hmm. the DTs are just going to yeah. do it here. That's it. That's it. That's going to be game. He's going to just focus. Oh, he throws out another force field. He's trying to buy time as best he can. I don't think he can do it. Like, yeah. I actually don't think he can do it. Yeah, there's another sentry. That's going to be another force field. But he can't just keep going. You know, at some point, he Ooh. actually has to have the robo get a observer out. And the robo is going to go uh -huh. down. And he cannot get any detection here. Like, I think T-Bowl has just thrown the Hail Mary. <laughs> and he's scored, essentially, from the halfway court mark. Mm -hmm. One-handed throw around the backside. And he's He's got it. Yeah, yeah, I think he has. As we do have a forge being thrown down for Blisk. He's like, okay, maybe I can get some cannons out. Like, if anything, to try and hold on. But the DTs, they're in the main mineral line. The other DTs are chipping away at the main army as well. Yeah, they are. And the main army is going to try and go for a bit of a base trade. Uh, the probes are going to join it. But I think it's a little bit too little too late with the three DTs coming up here. <laughs> You're going to see T-Bowl probably just warp himself a sentry at the top of that ramp and allow the DTs to kill the rest of the army. And I think that's going to be it. Oh, no. Actually, there is the blink there. I think for blinks uh, for Bliss stalkers, right? Did he not? Did he research blink a little bit earlier? He did. I don't know if it finished. He did finish. Um, he okay. does have blink. So uh, the the force fields will not actually keep him out of the base there. I think what's important as well is that even if Tebow loses his main base, he has a ninja base at the bottom right. Oh my god! He's thought of everything. <laughs> You, you just got to hand it to T-Bolt at this point. You just got to hand it to him. Yeah. He's thought of everything. Exactly. Like, uh, Blisky had this, like, such a big brain play earlier, but now the DTs are just too much. He's trying to trade as best he can, but he just he can't do anything to the DTs. This might be the best PvP I've watched in <laughs> quite a while. Absolute ridiculousness. First game really delivered. This one delivered as well. You've got to give it a hand to T-Bolt there. He was so far behind. Blisk had him dead to rights, but the Dark Shrine does it again. It is 1-1 in this last chance qualifier match. Don't go anywhere, it's just heating up.
One one in this PvP series, and that last game absolutely delivered. If you're going to go back and watch a single map from this entire ANZ champs, definitely don't go and watch that 60-minute long risky game. <laughs> watch that PvP map mm -hmm. uh, back once again because that was a really a roller coaster of a map. Like that, that was peak PvP. Is what that, <laughs> is what that was like. It had everything. It had DTs. It had you know stalkers around the bases. Um, we even had a ninja base towards the end. Like, like it was it was crazy yeah the good old expand to the bottom right this was the maneuver <laughs> mm -hmm. that blisk used to basically have teeple dead to rights this mm -hmm. was his game to win look at the army supplies 14 to 4 a shield battery and two stalkers is the only thing that t-ball has to defend shield battery gets sniped immediately and bliss starts to push the issue up the ramp but a century keeping t-ball alive until the uh -huh. dts can get over there and those were the difference make a light oh my god it worked out for him there was no detection there was no stargate there was no robo there was no forge it was he was hinging everything on this robo to finish and it just didn't it just didn't it did not. You are totally right there, Light. I mean, if I was to make an analogy for that game, I think Blisk, he basically kicked the soccer ball all the way down the field. All he needed to do was just tap it in, and he couldn't do it. Uh, mm. Tier ball, he just turned it around, and he scored himself a goal. And that's <laughs> a one-on-one apiece between both of these players. Mm -hmm. An excellent, excellent game. I think so far, Blisk has looked a little bit more solid than, than Tier ball overall. Yeah. Tier ball getting away with a little bit of smoke and mirrors in that last game. Yeah, definitely. And I think something that's, that's exciting is that here, finally, on the final series of the day, we're tied up. Like We've had a lot of 2-0s today. We have had a lot of 2-0s today. A little bit more back and forth. I think we should probably, by all rights and uh, fairness, be in a 2-0 scoreline in favor of this <laughs> right now. But things don't always go the way that you expect, particularly not in the game of StarCraft, particularly not in a Protoss mirror. Yeah, I was about to say, not in the PvP, mate. Anything's possible. Whether it's the, the thing is, like, you have DTs, you have Oracles, you have Disruptors. Like, there are so many units that, like, in a, bl like, in a second, they can just change everything. You're yeah, very right there, Light. And, uh... Into Romantic side now. I feel like this is kind of becoming the favorite of the map pool a mm. little bit, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's massive. It um it favors like more macro play. Something else that we haven't seen too much on this, but because it's so large, like there is potential here to sneak out a pylon and sneak something out, like a proxy out on the map. Mm. 
bit of an awkward timing. You could uh, potentially hide things in some pretty sneaky locations. I would be keen to see something like that. Yeah, I believe um, one of the other days you casted, was it Blisk? Um, where he proxied a pylon and then warped in a DT on the other side of the mineral line. Yeah, that was an interesting game. Um, I think that was between him and Simon. Hmm. And uh, yeah, it was like the difference between <laughs> like that DT and the pylon getting uh, shot down and the DT not getting warped in. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that's a bit of karma because I remember those <laughs> DTs winning Bliss that game against Simon in the PvP. And uh, you know, what goes around comes around, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately it came around a lot harder here, like in the qualifying match of all maps. So <laughs> I actually got karma myself today. Um, like I went to a market and um, I was walking around just looking at all the stores and I didn't see that there was a line very neatly plopped around the side of the store. Uh -huh. And I accidentally pushed in and, and put my order in ahead of everyone in the line because the, the server thought that I was the first person in line when I hadn't even lined up yet. But the server then misplaced my order and I had to wait an additional 25 minutes for my food. <laughs> and everyone who was behind me in the line got their food first anyway. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. If you think about it, there's uh, a real life example of the DT uh, yep. DT thing that happens. Yeah, that's essentially <laughs> the, the the DT hail mary right there. Uh, I guess so. Either way, uh, my weird life stories that no one wants to hear about aside, we do have a double stalk opening for both of these players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interestingly, there isn't really a proxy pylon out on the map for T-Ball. Blisk, though, he does have something down there to the bottom left. Um, again, no building, just just a pylon. And yeah, we're just getting into a pretty standard PvP. This time, both players have opted to go for Stalkers. No no, no one went for a more aggressive Adept opening. No one went for the Adepts, which means there won't be any heartbreaking moments where people forget to plug the wall, at least for a little while, mm. till we move through the rest of the game. Uh, T-Ball really looking like he wants to drop that Nexus. Blisk also wants to drop that Nexus, but before he gets that safety shield battery in position. Yeah, he does delay it quite a bit, but just to be safe. Um, and I mean, I don't blame him, especially if he is the more solid player. I feel like after game one, he kind of proved that a little bit, um, especially the way he lost game two as well. I think what we're seeing from both of these players is exactly what you'd expect on a more macro-oriented map in a mm. PvP. Both of them opening with some stalkers that can help you get a little bit of map control, trade a little bit of da damage back and forth. Then you do have the sentries for safety as well as scouting uh, T-Ball with that shield battery. Should be totally fine to push the stalkers of this away here. Yeah, and I guess we're just waiting to see what the next tech structures are going to be throwing down. Blisk, of course, he is throwing down his Robo. Um, no, like, Stargate play, no early Twilight Council or anything of that nature. Um, so nothing too crazy as T-Ball, he himself is going for that Twilight Council. I imagine he's probably going to be going for Blink Stalkers. And, yeah, I mean, they, I mean they, they've become a staple when it comes to this matchup, right? Blink Stalkers, Disruptors, like, that's what we're going to probably end up seeing here in this map. Most likely, but... The paths to end in the Blink Stalkers and Disruptors being a little different for both of these players. Robo and Twilight being the choice either way. Yeah, and we'll see if, I mean, Bliss, he could start for a faster Immortal production with that Robo, or he could get out of War Prism if he wants to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, as he does start, oh, okay, no, he's changed his mind. He started War Prism, cancelled it, has started that Immortal. Um, and again, with that Immortal, you're pretty safe. Like, if your opponent is aggressive with Stalkers and you're going up against Immortals, it can be pretty difficult to, to get any damage done. That's right. Well, I haven't seen any of those situations in a PvP where the Immortals have just pretty much won the game for one mm -hmm. of the players. I feel like the Disruptor's kind of taken that that role yeah. of, the, of the, you know, big difference maker of a unit in PvPs. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any fancy footwork with the Warp Prism Immortal sort of plays either, and I'm liking what I'm seeing from Blisk. It seems like he's moving his way through the rowboat units a little bit, the Immortal for safety now into the Warp Prism and getting his own Twilight. T-Ball, on the other hand, is, uh, you know, moving into the faster plus one and is only now just getting his robo down. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, big, like, two base immortal all-ins used to be a lot more common um, maybe a year ago. But the introduction to the shield battery, not just shield battery, sorry, but the shield battery overcharge, like, that made it a lot more easier for Protoss players to defend. Um, and then that kind of, you know, changed the meta a little bit and forced, like, this more blink uh, stalker disruptor play. Yep. Okay, well... Looks like Blisk getting a little bit more active out on the map with a couple of these stalkers now. 
as T-Ball drops himself a third Nexus. Yeah, he's looking to expand a little bit faster compared to Blisk. Meanwhile, Blisk, he is pushing across the map. He does have that Immortal, does have that War Prism to reinforce. But uh, you do see T-Ball has the much faster Blink. It is just about to finish up right before this push does come in here. So that micro potential could potentially help him out. Uh, I think that's a little bit too much focus fire on the Nexus. And so mm. T-Ball totally agrees. Instant <laughs> cancels that one. And now Blisk, in the meanwhile, drops his own Nexus after pressuring his opponents down. Yeah, and ooh, as we do get pointed out, T-Ball, he's a little bit supply blocked at the moment, so he's stuck with what he has right now. That's not ideal. The worst possible timing for that, but... <laughs> Picks off that one Stalker, the Overcharge being something that Blisk is not interested in dealing with just yet. The Warp Prism up on the high ground could create a little bit of a bridge for Blisk's units if he wants to utilize that, but instead just warps up those two Adepts and sends them into the mineral line. And he's pretty happy with the situation he's created. Picks off two probes. You do see that Nexus being forced down a little bit earlier. And now Blisk is just like, well, my third Nexus is a little bit faster. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, I'm sure Blisk, he was like looking for an opportunity, looking for an opening. If T-Ball, he committed a little bit too hard to the defense against the Adepts and pulled too many units up, then Blisk would have taken that opportunity to push into the natural, but he had none of that. He kept the majority in his natural, so he was able to defend, and Blisk, he just goes back home. He's going to go chill because the man is moving through the tech tree like an absolute speed demon. He's going for the Dark Templar, going for the Colossus Den. Same thing you see for T-Ball, though. He's also going for those, <laughs> and he's got a much faster plus one. In fact, he's a whole plus one ahead of Blisk for the time being. Yeah, so that will help when it comes to the Stalker versus Stalker battles, but not so much when it comes to the Disruptors, and that's exactly what both players are going for. Oh, but does catch an Immortal in the center. Really not ideal. Don't know what it was doing out there. <laughs> Having a little bit of an excursion, maybe a little bit of a Wally situation, uh, trying to find Eva or something like that. But uh, more Stalkers will be Chrono boosted out from the Robo Bay for Blisk to try to replace that. Let's just pretend it never happened. <laughs> this is the same Immortal that I had earlier, don't uh. worry. And yeah. uh, Disruptor now being uh, Chrono boosted out as well there. Like. Yeah, hopefully the Disruptor doesn't meet the same face, the fate of that Immortal, um, as it's quite common sometimes to rally your robot into the center of the map because you have an Observer on the way, mm. and then it finishes, then you have the Immortal queued up, and it just it just goes. You bring back some bad memories right now. <laughs> like, um, yeah, let's not talk about that. Let's <laughs> talk about the fact that the third base is for both players really pumping along, but uh, Blisk has definitely got a little bit of a worker lead and a bit better saturation on his Third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Showing off that um, that advantage that he had as he did get a faster third base. He forced T-Ball to cancel his earlier. So because of that, he does have that worker lead. And with that, he's going to be having a little bit of a stronger army. You know, he has plenty of disruptors. But as we were pointing out, T-Ball, he does have that upgrade advantage. Plus two going to be finishing up soon. Couple of DTs hopping into the uh, warp prism there. Looking to try to slice some drones, uh, oh, some probes rather. Uh, a little bit later on when T-Ball feels like the time is right. Yeah, and this time Bliss should have detection. He's, he's had his robot for quite some time now. He should be okay. We shouldn't have a repeat of game number two. Mm. You're using a lot of words that don't necessarily mean that he will, though. <laughs> That's it's, the thing. And, yeah. uh, no, come on, man. <laughs> T-Ball, please. Uh... <laughs> Oh, I God. don't want to cast PvP anymore <laughs> like you don't. Stop making you know, me do it. Mate, you know what this shows, though? This shows how equal these two are. Oh. Both players just <laughs> trading Immortals. It was a uh, gentleman's agreement mm. there from T-Ball. You know, Bliss donated him an Immortal. Mm. It's just like real life. You lend your mate five bucks, he'll yeah. come back at some point and give you five bucks back. Definitely happened with all of my friends. <laughs> and they definitely did not forget about it. In a very, very short uh, fashion. Exactly. Tebow, he didn't forget. He was on top of that, <laughs> made sure he gave that immortal. And oh, okay, we do have a couple of DTs coming out, but Tebow hasn't utilized them quite yet. Oh, no. We're starting again, aren't we? Like, mm -hmm. it's going to just be the disruptor shots. I'm not sure if my heart can take it, to be honest. There's oh, Bliss boy. starting to size up this additional nexus that uh, Tebow is trying to establish down here. Yeah. We'll focus that one down. Of course, now the Dark Templar shenanigans begin. Four of them being dropped straight on top of that Proton Cannon. 
Okay, so you were talking about detection. Where is it at? Has he got it? Yes, it seems like he does. All of the zealots <laughs> diving straight on top is the photon cannon in the left side is something that evaded my eyes. Yeah, thankfully he did have two cannons, not just one. So he, he should be able to defend as long as he has the units. Bye, right, Dark Shine. It was nice knowing you. Um, that has gone down and actually Blisk has pulled his entire army back mm. to be able to deal with this. Wow, and that was huge because Blisk, when he was posturing outside the fourth base of Tebow, he had double the disruptor count. He had four to only the two of Tebow. And now, with only this one move, Tebow forced Blisk all the way back home. Yeah, StarCraft players hate him. It's only this one cool move. You too can be a pro <laughs> StarCraft player qualifying for DreamHack Winter. Mm -hmm. Well, don't get ahead of yourself. You know, he hasn't qualified quite yet with that move. Um, Blisk, of course, he was just playing it safe. You know, he came back, he defended, and now maybe he can make something happen. Yeah, nine out of ten dentists recommend that move <laughs> as uh, you do have another nexus coming down for both players uh, what prism does get cleaned up there by t over towards the right side and uh, actually a centralized nexus being taken there by bliss towards the middle mm, yeah uh, is that this. the uh, the the big gas <laughs> is that what you call it? The big gas? <laughs> That's all I could think of. <laughs> so I don't know what it's called. A rich recipe. There, there you up. go. There's no way I'm going to say that. <laughs> I'm calling it the big gas. Uh, the rich recipe. Yeah, the big gas is oh, going to be taken. The but big push straight Ooh. in towards the natural here for Blisk. He's just getting straight on top of everything. Gets that pile on down and is going to start to focus onto the nexus in the natural off T ball as well. Now the drop in towards the main uh, action just happening everywhere. Insano is absolutely molding as we're into another base trade situation. The stalkers getting on top of the natural off Blisk and T ball uh, trying to do the same back in response. Yeah, but once again, Blisk, he started first. He was already attacking the natural when Tebow was making his way towards Blisk's side of the map. So it looks like Blisk will be able to take out more buildings. And I guess we'll see if he's going to recall. We're just going to commit to this base trade. I'm waiting to see who's going to pull the plug and actually go for a bit of a recall. 51 workers going down for T-Ball, a very sad state of affairs indeed. That disruptor shot going into the mineral line will add a couple more to the tally there for T-Ball. But Blisk is running his workers away smartly, just trying to keep that economy alive. And he has enough money for a Nexus, so he can potentially relocate later on. He's decided he's moving house. <laughs> Maybe you could make the argument that he's being forcefully evicted here. Uh, we could be in a situation oh, where... Boy, oh, that my. is a juicy disruptor here from Blisk <laughs> again. Jesus Christ, like his, his hits are just so on point and he's pulled all his drones across the map so he could just kill this base and just throw a Nexus down. I think that's what he's going to do. He might even expand over to the third of T-Ball, move into his house and uh, hit up his mum and say, hey man, what's up? As uh, you move into the main base, the Nexus being taken out. Uh, for both players, really, as uh, Blisk, that's that's a mana, mana mine if I've ever seen it. You know, we don't have any mana mules in the PvP, but uh -huh. saturating your opponent's uh, Lexus and, and uh, A clicking down all his buildings is one, is one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is where it's going to start breaking my brain. I need to kind okay. of take a step back and think about who's winning this game. I think it's Blisk. Yeah, so Insano was pointing something out. Um, so both players do have observers. I was a little bit concerned that maybe a DT would come out and then because there was no Robo, no production, then maybe something crazy could happen. But both players do have one observer remaining, so nothing like that. And we do see Tebow and Bliss. They are both trading places, throwing down their Nexuses. Bliss just chucks his Nexus anywhere. Mm. I mean, 26 workers uh, to one. So if this ever starts to get into a mining situation, then Blisk has got it done. Blisk has a stronger army. Uh, t has got an extra upgrade. Uh, mm. Look, I think the only way t can do anything here is if he has some some of the best Blink Micro and Disruptor shots I've ever seen yeah. in my entire life. I would say the only way t wins is if he goes for the elimination. If he somehow outmaneuvers Blisk and gets into the main and kills the Nexus and just wins by killing the buildings. Like, okay. I, I think if, if they fight head on, like, the Blisk wins. Like, there's no way t can win the main fight, right? I can't believe I'm casting this game. <laughs> like, I'm new around here. You guys are going to make me cast this. Like... I, I just can't. I have no mm -hmm. words. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Blisk, he has a Nexus. Um, I, I, does he have a pylon out on the map as well? Or is that his only building? 
I think that's his only building. I can't see any other red squares. Mm. Structures. Yes. Yeah, that's the Nexus only one. now. Okay, three yeah. pylons here for T-Ball, none of which uh, Bliss can see because obviously T-Ball is not being revealed. Now the engagement, it's going to be a front on five disruptors versus three. This is a little bit of a bad situation for Bliss. A nice blink to avoid losing those extra couple of stalkers. Such a tense situation. Purification Ooh. Nova's being sent either way. That's another disruptor going down for T-Ball. He can't afford... Oh, Oh my god, you we're talking about uh -huh. it. The maneuver back around. There's another disruptor going down, but the three zealots going down into the mineral line here. They're going for the probes, at least for the time being. More purification novas going back either way here, Light. Like again, it's important oh. to know that Oh, he does dodge the shot just in time. T Ball, he can give up that Nexus. Like he does have two pylons out to the left hand side of the map, so it wouldn't be over. Again, Bliss, all he has is his own Nexus. He's got a pylon. Where's that pylon? That, no, no longer. That's it. That's all he's got. Oh no. The ri oh my god. It's a race. Surely not. Okay, okay, okay. He throws down the gas. He throws down the assimilator. And he's not being revealed yet, so Bliss can still defend the assimilator. Mm. Okay, okay. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's yeah. relax a little bit. Okay, okay. So T-Ball, once he kills that Nexus, then Bliss will be revealed, and then T-Ball will realize that the, the gases have been taken. Meanwhile, T-Ball has already been revealed, so Bliss, he's aware of I the violence. I love this. You're leaving the majority mm. of your forces out there. You're going to try and split off a couple of stalkers towards the edges of the map, just try and put a little bit more pressure on. An absolute standstill here as we do get into a true base race situation. Uh, both players well aware of where the pylons and gases are for each other. This is going to be a sniped pylon given up for free without a single stalker taken back in response there for T-Ball. Not an ideal situation. His last structure is over towards the left side. There's one one stalker being picked off and another some great blink micro there from T-Ball but he's still behind an army supply and he's still behind where it counts which is the disruptors. Exactly and what's important is that there's only one pylon. Sure he picks off the war prism. It's not like he was going to warp anything in anyway. Um, and oh he tries to dive in. Yeah, he does. With the Blink Stalkers, the aggressive Blink forward, even more Stalkers going in the favor of Blisk here. The one structure for each of these players, or actually two, three structures there for Blisk. He's got two oh. over there and one in the top right. That first pylon does go down. Oh my god, oh T-Ball! He's, he's going to be able to focus it down. Oh he's my god, stolen. what? Another game from Blisk. How is T-Ball up to one in this series? <laughs> he's won another one. He's swindled it away. He's an absolute burglar here. Can he steal the whole series? We're going to have to go to a break before we can find out here, Light. We keep on searching But we will never know what we're after
passports, baby. Leave the rest in our troubled minds. Let us go down and left a baby. Trying to figure out what we're after. We're never heading back until we're older. We couldn't care no more, not any longer. On the peach, yellow skies, we keep on searching. But we will never. Welcome back to Highway Robbery. I mean, <laughs> ANZ Champs PVP. It's Blisk and T-Ball in a last chance qualifier spot to see who's going to join the top eight in DreamHack Winter as the eighth participant. And so far, Blisk has been winning three out of three games. <laughs> and he... he has only managed to secure one of them. He's been robbed by the DTs. He's been robbed by the base trade. But you got to give it to T-Ball, man. He's very, very good at yeah. quick thinking and mm -hmm. thinking on his feet. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's very persistent. He uh, he never gives up. And he's he's just rubbing bliss before our eyes right yep. now. Robbing us all blind, to be honest. And it's very entertaining. Um, but that was another crazy game. I don't think uh -huh. you could have delivered more after that TT uh, game previously. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you mentally recover from this if you're blissed? No, you don't. No, he's done. He's done, you reckon? <laughs> he's crumbling. Like, oh my god, two games in a row, right? Like, game two, you're like, oh, I just need detection. That's all I needed. And, and here, like, after a fairly long, like, pretty standard macro game where you're ahead consistently, and then, and then this happens. Yeah, rough state of affairs. I think the only way that you can kind of get yourself uh, back together, I think, if you're blisk, mm. is you just take a step yeah. back. You take that objective, you know, StarCraft uh, sort of perspective on things and go, hey, those games were going well for me. Yeah. All I need to do is just execute the same as I did all the other games and just make some better decisions as we head in towards the late game. Yeah. Some players, that's a little easier to do than others, though. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, it can be so frustrating. I'm sure a lot of people have experienced this in the ladder where you're winning, you're ahead, like you have this in the bag, and then it just slips through your fingers. Yep. Very frustrating feeling, and I'm sure it is even more so compounded by the fact that this is a last chance qualifier spot. We do have uh, a one map match point here for t -ball. He or a two match point rather for t -ball, as uh, he is up two and one in this series. One more needs to be secured for him to be the eighth player to go through to DreamHack Winter. Exactly. He's so close. Just needs to take it from Blisk one more time. And how's he going to do it? Are we, we going to see Blink DTs again? As if you see? could even call it at this point. <laughs> There's no way to know anymore. What haven't we seen? Uh, we haven't seen a cannon rush. Oh. No. That's not going to happen. <laughs> um, we've seen a sneaky base. We've mm. seen DTs. We've yes. seen a base trade multiple base times. Trade. That seems like... That seems like the new PvP special with all these recall shenanigans, right? <laughs> it seems like almost every game's a base trade. Is that normal? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, the PvP, it's, it's always been crazy, right? It just, it's all over the place. And we've seen it here today, you know, here in the last qualifying match between these two players. Of course, the last series that we have is, is this crazy. Yep. I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm absolutely hating it. It's a <laughs> very big roller coaster of emotions. Mm-hmm. 
but I'm ready for more. Yeah, yeah. And in all seriousness, like, I do hope that Blisk, he, he was able to take that break to recover a little bit, to take a step back, you know, maybe get some fresh air and be like, okay, look, like, I, I got this. Um, not let the nerves get to him and not not get that those previous games affect his mindset and, you know, bring it back. Proxy Pylon out on the map for both of these participants as they're trying to mess with each other a little bit at this point. Mm. Neither of them really being in any kind of favorable location to actually proxy anything meaningful in mm. terms of just making it a quicker fly distance or something like that to the opponent's mate. Yeah, definitely. So they're just throwing down their pylons out there and nothing being proxied quite yet. At this point, I don't know if we're going to see that in this series. Maybe if we if we take it to the ace match, that's going to be the map that they decide to proxy. Um, that'd be very fitting. Could be the case. Not quite at that ace match yet, though. Yeah, yeah. Blisk, he needs to bring it back here. And so far, both players, they are just playing this out pretty standard, pretty safe. And to, to me, this makes the most sense, sense for Blisk, right? Like, we were talking about it. He kind of just needs to tighten up, play as, like, standard and, like, defensive as he can to not let T-Ball get away with this sort of shenanigans. T-Ball is going to drop himself down a Stargate faster than the Nexus. And Blisk follows up his first initial Stalkers with some Adepts this time, actually. So a bit of a change up. Mm. Yeah, I like this. Blisk opting to be a little bit more aggressive, despite being down, despite being on match point, right, where one more loss and he's out of the tournament. Um, you know, he's being a little bit more aggressive here. I, I appreciate that. We'll see if it's going to pay off for him. As the Stargate does start to finish up, the Nexus is a little slower for T-Ball because he went for the tech a little faster. Mm. And now we are just awaiting what Bliss will choose for his tech option. Yeah, and hopefully he's able to scout this. You know, we've seen before, like when T-Ball didn't have or had no idea that a Stargate, that an Oracle was on the way, that he lost almost an entire mineral line. But Bliss, he's playing this out safe, you know, already a shield battery in that mineral line. Did he build anything out of the Stargate yet? I don't, I don't believe so. So he's built a Stargate, <laughs> and now he's building a Twilight. And now the Adepts have gone into the mineral line. Dear God, Blisk, another good situation for the man. He's put himself in the pole position yet again to win this game. Wait, um, he, he cancelled the Stargate, right? He cancelled the Stargate, I guess. Not sure why. Okay, okay. Uh, however, the Blink has been scouted by Blisk. Not only that, but he's also got himself five workers uh, killed off there. So that's going to put him at a pretty big worker lead. Mm. The proxy pylon is useful after all. You do see the DTs being warped in there for t -ball, as well as a couple of adepts being warped in for a little bit of mm. damage there. And oh my god, if he can steal another game away <laughs> with some DTs here. I'm going to be uh, absolutely molding. It could happen because he's he's going to be warping in DT soon. So so the Dark Shine is being proxied, which is quite quite nice. You know, it won't be scouted anyway anytime soon. Um, and the Robo is a little bit exposed in the natural. Like if the DTs get in and maybe depower, you know, focus down that pylon, and there isn't an observer out on the map, like that could be game. That could be game. It's also worth noting that Bliss did go up into the main and see that Blink researching. So mm. he might think that this is uh, looking pretty normal for Teebal so far, who does drop a little bit of a closer pylon to get a little bit of a closer rush distance. And even so, another couple of Adepts do sneak mm. into the main base. So that's going to be something that... Oh, Bliss, actually a bit of misdirection there from Teebal does sneak those Adepts in towards the natural instead. And the Stalkers are not in position to react. That's a couple of pros being picked off. In the meanwhile, I do believe that Bliss has snuck his own own, uh, mm. the own adepts in towards the natural base of his opponent. So both players going back and forth in terms of the adepts actually being warped in there. T-Ball, where are the DTs at? I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm waiting as well. I'm a little bit concerned because Blisk, he went for a War Prism first, not an Observer. So if the DTs come in before the Observer comes out, then uh, <laughs> I don't want to live in a world where that happens. Exactly. Okay, okay, he's got a Forge. He's got a Forge. This is great. This is great. Yeah, he's got a forge. He is working on that observer there as we well. Go. So okay. he's fine. Yeah. Well, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Surprisingly, we haven't seen the, the DTs warped in. Like the Dark Shine has been done, done for quite some time, and Tibor hasn't opted to utilize it. He's just waiting for his moment. Mm. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, a couple of stalkers getting active out on the map. We'll start to make some inroads in towards the natural of T-Ball here. It is the warp prism out there to get some more effective reinforcements. Both players going for the uh, the forges and the upgrades. Pretty even in the army supply. Yeah, we do see Blisk. He's looking to try and maybe sneak into the main base at the moment as he is posturing outside of the two bases of T-Ball with his main army. 
Well, much bigger main army for Bliss because he did get another warp in round. He's going to get aggressive up in Teeple's face here, who does actually have that shield battery in the back line. He's going to overcharge it to give himself a little bit more defending power and aggressive blink forward to pick off the shield battery there, Light. Yeah, the shield battery does go down with that. The rest of these stalkers are going to go down. The probes are forced to be pulled off the line and DTs are walked in defensively. They are walked in defensively and there is no observer here just yet. It oh. is sort of uh, flying over there as you finally see the reaction come in. In the meanwhile, T-Ball has definitely dropped a couple of additional workers. The Stipe on the Observer, a nice little mm. touch there for T-Ball, which will keep him alive, at least for the time being. Again, decisive plays, able to snipe that disrupt, sorry, that's that Observer, and because of that, Blisk, he's forced back home. Wow, T-Ball drops a third Nexus right in the face of this, just relying on that <gasps> one DP DT to keep him alive. And unfortunately, the Warp Prism does survive. Oh my god, Ooh. the last shot actually makes me eat my words as the Blink up into the main base, the Adepts trying to uh, shade themselves down in towards the natural and both of them survive which gives them a little bit more killing potential on the probes now more stalkers coming back in here trying to get on top of the probes on top of some of these stalkers and pick them off and the dts are a little bit too slow to catch up still trying to run in here more and more probes going down bliss creating another advantageous situation for himself in this game yeah i love it bliss taking advantage of his mobility avoiding the the dts despite having no detection and still dealing damage it's an 18 worker lead for bliss if he was ever ahead, then, uh, I mean, every game he has been, but this is another one of them. Uh, and that doesn't bode well, right? Whenever Blisk is ahead, he just somehow loses. So hopefully he can bring it back here and maintain his lead as he do he is working on that third base, you know, looking at that Western Union economy tracker. We have Blisk well ahead. Yeah, well ahead in terms of the work account. His Nexus is finishing up, so he's going to have an opportunity to start to saturate that. And... Uh... We have T-Ball here just uh, going uh, through the rounds. He's trying to pump out some additional Immortals. Another nice uh, snipe there on an Observer. And a DT trying to be a little bit sneaky, trying to sneak into the main base there will be spotted and will be picked off nicely once again. Yeah, you have to be careful with that because at some point you get diminishing returns. Like he's been spending a lot of DTs and he hasn't really been able to deal too much economic damage. Um, he's been able to hold on and defend, but that's about it. That's it for the time being. Another upgrade advantage here for T-Ball once again as he's pumping away the Chrono Boost into those upgrades. He's going to go for the Colossus there now and uh, try to move into the Disruptors here. Yeah, he's uh, this time the first player to go for that Robotic Spade. Typically, Blisk has been the first, and because of that, he has typically had the advantage in Disruptors. But yeah, opting to delay it a little bit here in, uh, in Game 4. Mm -hmm. Oh, a bit of a lull in the action now as uh, both players sitting on three bases. T-Ball has caught up in terms of workers, but he's trailing definitely in terms of the army supply. Yeah, definitely. And we interestingly, we do have Zealot Legs on the way as well for Bliss. So he's opting to go for a completely different kind of composition. And this is much more aggressive. You know, once you get a front line of Zealots, despite Blink Stalkers like the Zealots, they're going to get on top of that and they're going to tank quite a bit. He's got a plus one armor, armor advantage actually over mm. T-Ball here as he gets the Zealot Legs. He's a warp in of a couple of Zealots. They're going to be quite tanky actually mm. and be very effective at soaking up some of these Immortal shots. Now Bliss is going to shove in towards this third base. A couple of Immortals for him a couple of Immortals for T-Bowl and the aggressive Blink on top yet again as he's trying to get on top of the Immortals, trying to focus them down and now he has way more Immortals than his opponent. Ooh. The Disruptor shot does actually not really connect and that's going to be a bit of a nail in the coffin here for T-Bowl. I'd say Bliss has got this game locked down here. 50 Army Supply to 4. Bliss is going to take the victory and we do make it to the Ace match. I think there's a bit of justice in that for Bliss. Two apiece. We're going to decide this series but first a short break. Don't don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon.
hearts that beat in time In the towers, looking down all night Blocking out the sun that we need Maybe we can change our stripes and colors You're the only one I see And we take it all on Take it all along, nothing at all Driving through the night till I met your door Go outside Stay up on the high See through the sunrise That hit all of the Protoss army right there I think he's got enough time for the beam oh. It's gonna be close Oh, oh my god! Welcome back to ANZ Champs. It's the last map of the day, and of course it makes it all the way to the ace match. Of course it does, because earlier on, we were depriving you, uh, viewers, too many 2-0s, too many very one-sided series, but this last chance qualifier game is delivering in spade to your life. Uh, yeah, definitely. The entire day today has been nothing but 2-0s, and here we are in the ace match, in the PvP. And, I mean, you could argue that it should never have gone this far to the ace match, but here we are, and... And yeah, Blisk with just, just really solid play here. We've seen four maps of PvP, and I think it's safe to say that Blisk has win been winning all mm -hmm. four of those <laughs> maps. But still, T-Ball has swindled two games away with some absolutely magical plays. He's literally uh, a master burglar, this man. We head through into the fifth map here, and it's going to be the decider to see who's going to make it through to that top eight to Dreamhack Winter. And I'm not sure which way it's going to go. We're heading on to Oxide, a map that I'm a lot less familiar with. So it could be anyone's game, really. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, Blisk, he was even saying himself, you know, during the break that he knows that he feels like he's the better player, you know, in a solid straight up game. But despite that, despite having that mechanical skill, like Tebow, he's just been able to sneak in wins with base trades, with DTs. You can believe you're the better player. Uh, PvP doesn't care. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty much the moral of the story. You can yeah. still win or lose depending on how the games go, depending on you know what you scout, uh, depending on you know some scissor paper rock situations <laughs> or some the micro mistakes can be the difference between you winning and losing the game. So here we go, all the way to a fifth ace match between Blisk and T Ball, a uh, massive massive series so far. Plenty of entertaining games, and I, I can't get wait in, wait to get into the next one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like I mean, it, I, I like that. Um, Blisk was able to bring it back. Like we were talking about like his mental state and whether or not after losing two games in a row like that, whether he could even, you know, find the mental fortitude to stay in that game and bring it to the ace match. And he was able to pull it off. He was, you got to give credit to the man. He continued playing his game, continued to go for those blink stalkers, which have been doing him uh, quite a lot of justice uh, in this series and also in some earlier parts. And he's going to make, put himself in the pole position to once again qualify in a last chance qualify in the PvP, similar to what he did last season. That is the countdown timer that I wanted to hear. We're getting into the last game of the regular season. The round robin here for ANZ Champs is done. We're in the last chance qualifier game. We're in the ace match in a PvP between Blisk and Tebow. You couldn't really ask for much more. Exactly. We're here and it all comes down to this. This is the final game of ANZ Champs winter and mate. We're loading in to Oxide L.E. Oh boy, and how is this going to go again? Singapore versus Pakistan. T-Ball, he's a little bit newer to this scene, to this region, but we're already here in the ace match, and I said his name, but spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, we have representing Pakistan and Red Dragons. It is T-Ball. And over on the other side of the map, it's the return competitor. He has already qualified for the top eight in DreamHack in a previous season of ANZ Champs. He's looking to do it again. It is the red Protoss player, Blisk. Oh boy, and already Blisk playing a little bit differently, taking both of his gases. 
not just the singular gas. So wants a bit more of a earlier gas injection. Actually, you do have the uh, gateway on the low ground here for T-Ball. So a couple of differentiating factors. T-Ball going to start to put a pylon down, maybe try to sow some seeds of doubt in Blisk's mind that he's going for a bit of a cannon rush. Gimmicky as always, <laughs> Mr. T-Ball. And you do see a couple more probes making it down to just focus down that pylon. And it won't be committed there by T-Ball. He does cancel that one and brings his probe back around. In the meanwhile, dropping a very early Nexus. It's a one-gate oh expand, God. actually, from T-Ball in a PvP in the ace match here against Blisk, who has opened up with both of his gases. Yeah. What way are we heading here, Light? Uh, this is interesting, especially because T-Ball, he scouted the opener. He scouted the gases. He saw that, you know, Bliss Nexus was delayed. But despite that, he, he feels confident enough to expand here. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like either it's a overconfident play or an underconfident play. Maybe mm. trying to cut some corners to get in a better position after a couple of rough games that have, let's be real, mostly gone the way of Blisk so far. Mm. Blisk chrono boost straight into the warp gate there rather than his opening stalker. I think he's going to spot this Nexus here, and I really would not be surprised <laughs> to see Blisk start to put some pressure on. Oh, yeah. Actually... He's going to drop himself the Stargate. There we go. So we do see what that gas was utilized for. He is going to be going for that Stargate. But Tebow, because he's aware his opponent went for that double gas, I, I hope, he didn't do it last time, but I hope he does get some kind of defenses at home that he does throw down a shield battery at least. Well, it is that uh, Stargate follow-up from Tebow as well as a shield battery for safety and maybe even for necessity, you would argue, with such an early Nexus in here. Mm. Um, he's starting to saturate that one. And a Nexus is sort of just a thought in the back of uh, Blisk's mind at this point. Yeah, he's going to throw down his when his opponent has already finished for quite some time. So a little bit behind on the economic day game, he's going to have to find a way to get back into it. Yeah, definitely. And I'm just waiting to see what the first units from these targets are going to be from both players. Are they both going to throw Void down? Ray. Oh. Void Ray for T-Bolt. And an Oracle for Blisk. So defensive option for mm. T-Bowl. He wants to be able to hold on there. And that might do, especially with the increased movement speed, a little bit more justice for T-Bowl to be able to defend against this Oracle here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like T-Bowl, he's actually playing very well here, I feel. Like very defensive. Um, if As long as he gets away with this earlier Nexus as well and doesn't sustain too many losses to this Oracle, like he's going to be looking pretty good. He's almost got a uh, eight, nine worker lead here over mm. Blisk. He's really utilizing that uh, second Nexus quite a bit. And he's getting a lot more income for it. You'll absolutely love to see it. T-Ball now getting himself an Oracle and Blisk getting himself his Void Ray to follow up. But as Insano did point out a little bit earlier, T-Ball didn't actually spot out the Stargate from Blisk, but he has left his Void Ray at home. Yeah, exactly. It's at home. There's a shield battery at well. I can't imagine this Oracle is going to deal too much damage. Oh, goes for the Stasis Ward. Yeah, sees the shield react. battery, and he does get that stasis ward down. Wow. That's a whole lot of income going down there for T-Ball that he's not going to have access to. Yeah, absolutely love to see. Even flies Ooh. into the natural against three probes, and the what? Oracle gets out on, like, one HP. What? Oh, that is beautiful play there from Blisk. But what? still, okay, still... He is at a 10 worker deficit uh -huh. and he still doesn't have any tangible way just yet to crack this earlier Nexus that oh you saw God, at a T-Ball. Oh my God, he's not mining. He didn't realize when they came out of stasis. No way. In the fifth match. <laughs> In the fifth match. Please, T-Ball. Oh T my God. Okay. okay, he's back mining. Jesus. That is a lot of lost mining mm -hmm. time though there, Light. Um, that even stings up a little bit. Yeah. He still does have a 10 worker lead. He's now moving into the Twilight Council, sending his two Void Rays across the map here. Blisk moving into the Blink, though. It's his patented uh, Blink Stalker play once again. Yeah, I'm, I'm just in awe by what Blisk has been able a to do. A like... Dark Shrine, of course, there is. There's no <laughs> Robo here for Blisk. There's no Robo. There's no Robo. There is a Stargate, though, and he did keep his Oracle alive. So Revelation will be able to be used to spot those DTs. Meanwhile, we do have both Void Rays going into the main. Trying to do a little bit of damage, but the shield battery keeping all of the probes alive. And unfortunately, he will have to fall out here, T-Ball. And please, Micro, oh, your, please, Micro, your Void Rays, T-Ball. <laughs> oh, no, he's lost a Void Ray and another one. I think it was a little bit earlier of the Void Ray activation for T-Ball. <sighs> so that actually is what ends up winning him, that Void Ray on Void Ray fight. But... Uh, all things said and done, now you're seeing some of these adepts get in and be a little bit mismicroed, actually, from T-Ball. 
A couple of uh, weird uh -huh. mis-micros for T-Bowl in this ace match. This is not really how you mm -hmm. want to be seeing him lose this game. Nothing game-losing just yet. The Dark Shrine starts to finish up here just as uh, T-Bowl and Bliss both put down their own uh, Ropos. And T-Bowl, he's adding a lot of gateways here. It's a swell of gateways. After he moves up to 50 workers, he is no longer probing here. Like mm. He's looking to go on the offensive. Uh, yeah, he definitely is. And it's as you were saying, he loses his Void Rain. He's been having a little bit of hiccups here and there when it comes to his micro. Um, like, uh, sure, we expect Bliss to have the better of it, but Tebow, he's just, I don't know, maybe the pressure is getting to him, and he, but he can't allow that to happen here. Not in the ace match, not in the most important match of the night. The DT is being warped in towards the north side, now starting to move in towards the natural. And you don't see the Observer, I don't think. It was no, actually yeah. the Warp Prism. No not again. <laughs> Surely not again. The DTs, they're slipping into the main. They're uh, going to be split up in towards the Natural as well. And Blisk, he's only now just Chrono boosting out the Observer. But the DTs are absolutely ripping apart the Mineral Line. You're seeing the work account just absolutely plummet here for Blisk. But T-Ball still has access to those 50 workers. He's dropped his own third Nexus there. And he started to Chrono boost out a few Immortals. And 15 workers go down for Blisk in the ace match. Talk about a couple of slippery misplays there for T-Ball, but talk about 18, oh, 15 <laughs> workers rather, going down an 18 worker difference there. Exactly, like Blisk, he was already at a worker deficit before the DTs came in, but now after after that, like Blisk, he's down to only 35 workers. He's still on two bases. Meanwhile, T-Ball, he's expanding, he's taking his third, he's well ahead. Yep, Western Union economy, you do see the mineral income is way more up there, including the gas income for <laughs> T-Ball. He takes a ninja! He is uh, absolutely... Yeah, he takes a ninja base. I didn't even realize what you said. I thought you spoke a different language because you're so excited there, Light. But he does take a ninja base up in the top left, T-Ball. He is getting away with absolute murder right now. And I'm talking about the probes. Look uh. at this DT again, slipping up in there. Gets six for itself. And now Blisk, he's frustrated. He wants to go and try to put pressure onto T-Ball. And T-Ball is trying to cling to his secondary base. The ninja base in the top left. Will it be discovered by Blisk actually warping in these dark templars i feel like will at some point get bliss to try to look for that pylon and if he looks a little bit too hard he might actually find that base in the top left again yeah. the dts are slipping in here and will get on top of things the warp prism does get taken out there's the reinforced potential oh my god blisk is in a rough position now mate he's falling apart the dts are dealing even more damage surprisingly like no cannons no static defense was thrown down and now the dts are just wreaking havoc blink is about to finish up for them as well and forces a recall mm -hmm. Blisk is uh, now bringing his base, his army back in towards his base. A 16 worker lead here for T-Ball. He also has the army supply uh -huh. advantage and he is not stopping with these DTs. He got the DT blink upgrade. He's continuing to warp them in. Never really gets easier here for Blisk, who's being kept honest. And look at the transfer, actually, to the, mm. that top left base for T-Ball. He actually sent a lot of the workers up there to really get that one kickstarted. He's fully saturated, <laughs> that one. And yeah. that is going to mean that uh, there is a big misread there. No, and Bliss now, moved out. Again, he moves out, and the DTs go in once again yeah. for T-Ball. It's getting right on top of the probe line in towards the natural. Another three workers going down. The blink over the top. And you do just start to see them continue to pick off those probes. And Bliss is forced to come home yet again every time he wants to move out. He is keeping him back at home. Uh, exactly, and it's important to know that earlier, uh, just, sorry, I almost said Justin Simon, Blisk, he, for, he was forced to recall, so he couldn't do that once again, so he was forced to pull back his army from across the map. He's pushing across, and he's like, oh, there's no third base. Okay, it's not too bad, but there's a ninja, and it's fully saturated. Absolutely ridiculous. T-Ball has balls of steel light. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy, this man. He's got a bunch of zealots over there towards his top left-hand side base. He's really warping in over there, waiting for Bliss to commit in towards his natural, waiting for Bliss to take that engagement, and mm -hmm. then he can go for the full counterattack, the full base race with all of those zealots. Blisk walking around the map. Seeing if he can find where that third is. Surely he's taken a third by now. Like, it's not over here. Yeah. It's not over on the right side. What the bloody hell is going on in this game? Blisk is wondering to himself. Yeah, it's so difficult to do in a, in a PvP, right? Like, if you're a Terran player, you can scan around. You can try and look for a Nexus. But here, Blisk, can you to manually do so? Oh, look at all the Zealots starting to mobilize oh over there towards the natural. He is well aware that the... the, uh, the 
Army is out on the map. Look at that Army. It is so scary. The Disruptor needs to be able to throw out that Purification Nova, but the DT is blinking on top of it. All of the Zealots actually go down. That's going to make this a little bit less scary for Bliss to deal with. And he does have the Warping on top, so I think he's managed to avoid a major speed bump there. He does pull his Army back home. And yes, that is a massive speed bump avoided, but he is still not in a good position here, Light. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit perplexed because I'm just waiting. There we go. I'm, I was just waiting for Tebow to move out with his main army because he has quite a strong one, but he's taken his time and now Blisk, he has, his, he has a disruptor. He has just one with his main army with a decent shot. Maybe he has a chance. Um, oh, he even finds it, the ninja. He found it, and I don't think he's going to let those probes out of there alive. Surely not. He's not maneuvering his army, actually. So he is... He has found the ninja base, but I think that's well and truly paid for itself for yeah. T-Bowl, and he's also re-expanding to his third a little bit quicker than Blisk. This game, it actually does start to even out a I little mean, bit now. We, we see T-Bowl, he's trying to outmaneuver his opponent. Blisk, he has a lot oh, of his army no. supply over on the left-hand side. Yeah, and now you see T-Bowl go straight up the gut, <laughs> straight on top of the Robo facility. It takes it out straight away. The Purification Nova trying to get on top of the Stalkers does actually connect on a couple of those. You see the force fields on the ramp, and now T-Bowl is going to try and focus this Nexus down. Exactly, and he's force fielding Bliss down like he can't get through, like the Disruptor and stuff, but he is able to get in. The Nexus goes down, though. He can't enter his own front door. The Blink on top of the Disruptor. There's no more of those for Bliss. They've been so key for him all tournament long, and there is just so many Immortals just firing away, but mostly on top of the Zealots. Bliss trying to utilize that Blink Micro, trying to utilize his four Observers, not that they're really helping him at this point. And I think there is just a little bit too much here for T-Ball. The Immortals are making the difference. He's peeling with all of Bliss's last couple of units, and it looks like he's about to steal the ANZ Champs' last chance qualifier spot from Bliss with some absolutely ludicrous play exactly like it all comes down to the ace match where in the ace match he utilized the dts he utilized the ninja base as well and now we see that he's just blinking on top of on top of everything gg, GG gets well called played. good luck in the next and t-ball i think he has definitely earned that victory it's some very sneaky and creative plays you just cannot keep this guy out of dreamhack winter Blisk has already qualified before. You might have said that he deserved to do it again with how well he was playing in that series, but at the end of the day, the PvP doesn't care how well you play. It's the sneaky man's game, and T-Ball was the sneakier of the two. <laughs> exactly. Blisk, he was trying to play straight up. He was trying to play standard. But, mate, you're in the PvP. What are you doing? You know, you need to go for the DTs. You need to go for the Hail Mary plays. And that's exactly what T-Ball did. And with that, he came out on top. Absolutely beautiful. You absolutely love to see it. From a ping disadvantage in a micro-oriented matchup, he run some guerrilla tactics is how I would call it you know yeah. a couple of uh, crazy plays three games is what he needed you know usually in a best of five you don't get away with those kind of plays that's mm -hmm. more of a best of three or a best of one situation where you can get away with a couple of crazy plays you can get away with a couple of cheeses but he's done it three games out of five absolutely beautiful from Tebow yeah that was just amazingly done really showing off PvP in a nutshell right this is kind of what it comes down to um, the only thing we missed out on was we didn't have like any cannon rush or any real like proxy robo or proxy stargate but regardless he didn't even need it i think that delivered way more than any <laughs> any of those shenanigans could that was mm -hmm. a fantastic series you can see on the bottom right hand side of your screen after clean two o's all day long we finally get a series that goes the distance and god damn it absolutely delivered their light a three to two in favor of t -Bull. he will be the winner of the last chance qualifier spot the fifth